Um, yeah, well, you know, my understanding is, um, you know, the, the union members are on strike. The contracts were kind of structured for an earlier time when you didn't have a lot of these, you know, streaming and a AI um, coming into the force. So there's a real need to modernize the contracts so that the workers can make a living. We are compelled to be here today. Uh, as a sag after member, we strike not by choice, but by necessity. We are actually in a battle, not just for us, but for everybody going forward who works. Everybody who trades their labor for money to survive is in this battle with us. I'm going to tell you something. Before I joined the union, I was in a non-union industry. I got injured on the job. I sustained a brain injury. I was out of work for a year. My company, the corporation that I had worked for for years, fired me. I had no recourse. I was a newly single mother. I was disabled and I was afraid. When I got my SAG card, I have my SAG card right here. If everyone wants to show us your SAG card, go ahead and pull it out. Two years I've been in the union. I'm still green, but I, when I got this in the mail, I knew that I would be protected on the job. I am so proud to be part of a union. Yeah, that was, I think it started, what, the, it was the like first week of July. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause um, I was at Broadway, so that's when it all happened to me. That's the only way. It but um, when it first happened, I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen because the the the, um, the writers are already on strike. I said yeah. we're next. And we, yeah. when we were on sets, that's what we were all talking about. Yeah. The whole month of May and June, that's what we were talking about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it's, that's not surprising. Yeah, there was a lot of buzz yeah. on set before anything even came about because we were all, you know, hearing, oh, in solidarity of the writers, mm -hmm. we're probably going to be striking too. And I think that's. You know that's where it started and then once we heard okay well now we're going on strike too and i mean most of us i mean you know we we have to pay you know our bills with these jobs that we get and usually during this time we're usually booked back to back to back to back to back i mean i'm usually working at least two or three days a week yep. on any given production at any given time so like this is our busiest time and we haven't been doing anything nothing, nothing. absolutely nothing and we're lucky we're lucky we're getting commercials yeah, yeah. right now yeah. Because commercials it, 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 are commercials that we used to get. It used to be like maybe ten people trying out for. Now there's like two hundred people yeah. trying out for the same thing. So yeah. and commercials aren't under the the strike. So we can still yeah. do commercials if we get a commercial chance to do one. Then we're allowed to do commercials. There are certain social media things that we're not allowed to do. Um, you know, if you're creating your own content, um, you have your own channel, things like that. You can still continue to do that as long as you're not promoting any movie productions. Um, things like that, as long as you're not yeah. mentioning yeah. those. Yeah, but there's some talk. independent movies that are going on that they can they can film because right. they're not underneath that umbrella. Right. Now this is a landmark moment for the labor movement. Unions are in. Baristas and warehouse workers, librarians and grad students, yeah. medical residents and museum workers, right here in Massachusetts are joining the labor movement. They are joining the teachers. They are joining the hotel workers. They are joining the construction workers. They are joining the people who do the work. And they are joining the actors and the writers and the creatives who know that when we organize, we win. To change the game. It is time to make change from Washington. It is time to pass the PRO Act. Yeah. The PRO Act will strengthen workers' rights to unionize. The PRO Act will make it easier to form a union. The PRO Act will give unions more power to bargain collectively and when we need it, the PRO Act will protect the right of workers to do exactly what you are doing. Walk out of the workplace and onto the picket line. Well, I'm new to the acting, uh, started in April. It was a passion to which I've always desired to do amongst many, and this is one that I uh, wanted to get into and pursue. Um, so to get in at this time and for there to be a strike, I feel as if this is the right time to get in, uh, even with the challenges uh, facing me. One being the AI. 
that I think is a, um, a detriment to the uh, actors as well as the Actors Guild as a, uh, as a whole. Um, it takes away the uh, skill sets to which we strive to uh, be the best at. And for that to come in and to be utilized, almost capitalized on the uh, humans themselves, uh, it's an insult to say the least. Here in New England, we have over 3,000 actors who are members of SAG-AFTRA. Our union ensures that we have guaranteed minimum salaries. It helps those without high-powered agents to earn a living wage. Before I joined the actors' unions, I knew one day I would be a member. I knew that the only way to achieve longevity in my career was to be paid fairly. And the work I did, union membership was the only real path to having that longevity. Yeah. My unions provided me a way to earn a living, to earn benefits like pension and health, and to be treated fairly by my employers. Yeah. Now, for the first time since I became a union member, our employers are putting that goal in jeopardy. They don't want to pay us fairly for our work. They are offering an increase that in real dollars translates to a 5% pay cut when you factor in inflation. For background actors, they want the ability to scan our bodies to create digital images that will replace us in film and TV. They claim this is not what they want to do, yet they will not put that in writing. They want us to accept that they will do the right thing without giving us any assurances in our contract that artificial intelligence will not replace all of us. They These conglomerates that control virtually all of our big budget movies and TV shows are run by CFOs making hundreds of millions of dollars. Not only are they paid ridiculous salaries, but they are rewarded for making sure the working class actors and writers are paid as little as possible. I think most of us that are here have actually been scanned on set. Yeah, we have. Um, b while we're doing productions and they come up to you and say, oh, you know, can we scan you for this and that? And I don't think any of us really understood no, yeah. Yeah. at the they, time. They just told us to stick they in, just, like, in a We didn't like understand that. what it was going to be used for exactly. and what the ramifications of that were going to be. Because, it, you know, the, it was kind of like when you're on a set, you stand where you're told to stand. You do your action that you're told to, to do. And you're generally taking orders and not asking a whole bunch of questions or people get very upset with you. They get ticked off because, you know, their time is important and ours is not. Um, so we did. Like most of us here, if you talk to people, you'll say, oh, yes, we did get scanned, but we didn't re like realize why. I have to tell you, it is wonderful to be back in Boston, but it's particularly wonderful to look out and see all of you because you're actual human beings. You're not AI, CGI, all that crap. You know, I want to echo a comment that Senator Warren and other speakers have made because if the studios were using real intelligence instead of artificial intelligence, they would realize that shareholders and yacht salesmen are not the beating heart of the entertainment business. You know, AI is only, and its abuse, is only one of the reasons we're all out here. Another big reason is that streaming services have turned the business upside down. A few years ago, a friend of mine told me that every season of one of the shows that I've hosted, which I will not promote right now, <laughs> would be available on streaming. And I had a sort of Tony the Tiger response. I went, that's great. And he said, you say that until the residual check show up. So I brought one. <laughs> for a penny! No I remember working as a principal on my first major film. 
It was released in movie theaters and later made its way to basic cable, to TV, pay TV, DVD, and eventually streaming in foreign markets. Every time this film was sold to a new platform, the studio got paid and I got paid. Our union negotiated residuals into our contracts decades ago so that actors could participate in the actual success of a film or a TV show. As an actor always struggling to find work, I was so thankful when I got those residuals because they often came when I really, really needed the money. And though I was paid by the studio, it was my union that made that possible for actors like me. But in today's world, a film may be created by a single streamer and that project may only ever appear on that one platform. Even if millions of people subscribe to that service, our residuals do not at all reflect the profit that studio sees. Studio heads will tell us viewership doesn't merit a better residual payment. And once again, we're supposed to take their word for it. They won't tell us how many people subscribe to that service or how many people have watched that film or series. But these studios are well aware of who is watching what at any given time. They refuse to give us that information. Yet they pay their CEOs and upper management eight and nine figure salaries while telling us they are not making enough money to pay the people who actually make the films. If, if this continues, we can expect no one to be able to make a living as a professional actor. If it continues, we can say goodbye to the days of fair compensation in our industry. If this continues, it will happen to other industries and workers as well. And that is why we are striking. It is why we stand in solidarity today and will fight until we have a fair contract that honors what we bring to these projects. So it's important for unions to show solidarity together because they try to divide us and pit us against each other. They gave the DGA an agreement, but they wanted it to, to be that, oh, well, we'll give the GAGA this, but we won't give the WGA that. Oh, let's see what the actors are going to do. Let's get them to be fighting against each other. But when we're all united, we are stronger fighting against the, the big, huge corporations. The AMPTP is a mega uh, co uh, a media of mega corporations that are worth collectively trillions of dollars. And they were the ones who started doing a slowdown of television and film productions even before the negotiations started. So like it's all with them that affected the industry, which affected then going into the negotiations. And that's where we're all just trying to get a fair and reasonable contract. The painful effects of these work stoppages on our membership cannot be overstated. As difficult as these times are, we've heard time and again that our members understand that this fight had to happen. And our collective support for actors and writers help ensure we receive that same support when we return to the bargaining table ourselves next year. <laughs> PTP's failure to meet writers' reasonable demands is driving the Hollywood's guilds and unions together with unprecedented solidarity. We will not fall for cheap divide and conquer tactics. Behind the scenes workers everywhere are watching and we're seeing a wave of new organizing that's breaking down old barriers and proving that we're all in this together. Over 5,000 TV commercial production department workers won recognition of their union. And the group is slated to become the largest contingent of production assistants in the IA. And just this week, VFX workers at Marvel Studios filed to unionize with IATSE, a historic WGA has been on strike for a hundred days and I have been on a lot of picket lines and at every
every single one of them from a day one, we have been joined by members of SAG-AFTRA. Yeah. From the very beginning, we have been marching side by side, and the support of SAG-AFTRA has been invaluable. You have kept us strong and reminded us that this is an industry-wide fight because the entire industry must change. I was a writer on the show Suits for five seasons. You know it, it's the show about cosmically attractive lawyers with trust issues. And it is a really good show created by a very brilliant writer. But what made Suits a nine season success was our spectacular cast. And Suits seems to be having a moment right now. Apparently we are a Netflix sensation. Millions of people worldwide are watching the show. But we don't know exactly how many are watching. And that is a problem. What we do know is Netflix is making a massive amount of money on our show. You know what? We want Netflix to make money. All we're asking for is our fair share of it. I would like people to think about it. these are working people. We have an industry here with local people here and we pay our taxes and we have our livelihoods here and we are local. So we are not just Hollywood glamour. We're the people who live here and this is our community and we all deserve to be treated fairly. Well, corporate thinks that we'll buckle up until, or, uh, until uh, October is not going to happen because the rally only gets larger, the uh, support only gets larger, and at some point in time they will have to uh, pay attention and respond and accordingly, one that's going to be equal and fair and a win-win for all parties. United, the workers united.